What is up guys, it is Tony here and today we are doing an episode of How To Photo except today instead of being in front of a computer and recording the screen we are actually going to be doing something in person live on camera. We are going to be talking about L lenses or professional lenses versus consumer lenses. This goes for Canon, Nikon, even Sony and basically any sort of SLR camera brand that you use. Uh, the more expensive lenses, why they're more expensive, and of course the consumer lenses and why they are consumer lenses. So basically what happened recently was back in June I started using SLRs for video and a little bit of photography as well. And I was using consumer lenses including on the Canon end the 40mm f2.8, the 50mm f1.8, the 18-135, to and I was also using the kit lens. And these lenses are some of the nicest lenses I've used personally um, at this point in time and a lot of them produced very good images a lot of the images you see on my other videos if you haven't seen them check them out I do critiques all the time of older photos I've taken and most of those photos are taken with non-professional lenses so it starts to make you think are the L lenses worth that premium price well I decided that they were I actually purchased myself two L lenses. The first L lens I purchased is actually the 24 to 105 f4 zoom lens. This is a very good lens for doing video, and it's the kit lens that comes with the 5D, the 6D, and I believe the 7D. This is a very nice lens for doing video. It's extremely sharp, but is it better than that 18 to 135 I was using, which is also considered a very good video lens? The second lens I picked up is the 70 to 200 f2.8 IS2. This is considered one of the best L lenses out there, and some people argue it is the best lens Canon has ever made. Is it worth it? You know, I've replaced this lens that I used to have called the 70 to 200 2.8 Tamron, and it was a $700 lens. This is $2,500. Is it worth the extra almost $2,000 to get something that just looks a little bit more professional and has a few extra little specs in there? Is it worth it? Well, I'm actually going to go ahead and talk about both of these lenses and their improvements over the past lenses I've owned that used to do their job. So first off, let's talk about this 24 to 105. This is my go-to video lens. I do a lot of video with SLRs. In fact, that is mainly what I do with my SLR cameras. Uh, on the 5D Mark III and on my T4i, this lens works extremely well. I would say that this lens has a lot of benefits over the 18-135, to 135, which was the lens I used before. Uh, one notably being that this has a fixed aperture. What that means is that when I zoom from 24 down to 105, uh, the aperture of this lens stays the same, so my lighting doesn't need to be modified. I found myself with my 18-135 to constantly having to adjust my ISO and constantly having to make sure that I wasn't underexposed. With this lens, I set my white balance, set my exposure, and I'm ready to go no matter how much I'm zooming or how much I'm changing around my, uh, my focal length, and that's a huge benefit that you get out of L lenses. But that is not isolated to L lenses. You can get Tamrons and you can get Sigmas that are more affordable than the Canon lenses that do the same exact thing. So what's the benefit of the Canon variety of these more professional expensive lenses? Now this lens, you know, isn't really that much more in terms of a premium. In fact, Sigma is releasing a version of this lens that is actually not that much more uh, affordable. This you can get for around $800 in a white box and all that really means is it's refurbished or it's been used once. And I actually had really good experiences with buying this used. I have no scratches, no problems at all, and it's been working extremely well. I got this for $777. Now, what do you get over the Sigma lenses? Well, it's hard to say exactly what you get. Physically, the main specs you get that are better, in some people's opinions, over the Sigma lenses is, uh, for example, you get the USM system, the ultrasonic motor. This is a focus, focusing system that Canon has on their lenses that is rivaled by the hypersonic motor, motor systems and other systems that other companies have. And a lot of people seem to consider that the USM uh, motor on these lenses is the best focusing system you can get for a lens. That's debatable. Personally, I've used Tamron and Sigma lenses, and both of their focusing systems to me felt a little clunky. They had to hunt around for the focus a lot. This lens always jumps right to where you want it to focus, no problems. The only limitation I find is that the SLR 
sometimes can't you know focus on dark areas but that's a limitation of the SLR not the lens otherwise what else do you get from this lens because really to be honest focusing systems I mean we're talking about a one second difference here and there it's not it's not going to make a huge difference to have a USM motor so what else do you get you get a pretty nice image stabilizer uh, stabilizer in most of the Canon lenses you have image stabilizers that have a lot more uh, capability of giving you more control over your lighting it gives you for example in the 70 to 200 I have four stops of extra light in their IS obviously you can compare the two lenses you're looking at they'll tell you how many stops of light you can get out of the IS in terms of your shutter speed and if you find that this lens or the 7200 has a better uh, amount of light compensation with the IS or the stabilization that's of course a great feature to have uh, personally that doesn't really bother me too much because I like to be at a high shutter speed anyway because I shoot a lot of action I shoot a lot of sports and I plan on continuing to do that in the future uh, but IS for a lot of people is a huge feature now in terms of sharpness color fringing you know chromatic aberration all that stuff uh, I would definitely say these lenses have a huge improvement over the lower end Canon lenses uh, I'll show some images probably as this video is going on. Uh, my 40 millimeter f2.8 was terrible for fringing. My 51.8 was pretty bad for fringing. Those are pretty cheap lenses though. Now when I go into my 18 to 135, which was a $500 lens, my 70 to 200 from Tamron, which was a $700, $800 lens, honestly there was a lot of fringing in those lenses, even though they were a little bit more expensive. These lenses really you don't even notice the fringing unless you zoom in on the photo one to one or a hundred percent pixel um, ratio because at the end of the day these lenses just have better elements they have a lot better glass inside of them and that's what makes them cost more the engineering that goes behind these lenses and making them focally perfect um, now they're not focally perfect uh, at 24 on this lens 24 millimeters you get a lot of barrel distortion and uh, sometimes when you're at the, fur you know, the furthest, the widest focal length, you tend to get a little bit of vignetting on some of these lenses. So uh, what else do you get out of this lens? I mean, obviously, that's not all that you're going to get out of this. Well, one thing is you do get some minor weather sealing. Um, you can see, I'll do some close-ups, there is a rubber gasket around the mount of this lens. And also, pretty much every button and switch on this lens is sealed so water can't get into it, uh, at least without pressure. Um, obviously it's not waterproof, it's weather sealed, which means you can shoot in the rain, you can shoot in the snow, which is very beneficial, and a lot of the Tamron and Sigma lenses don't have those features. Some of them do, you have to shop around and make sure you know what you're buying. Also the uh, cool thing about some of these L lenses is the build quality. Now the 24 to 105, I gotta be honest with you, is not really built um, like most L lenses. It's pretty plasticky, I and mean, it's still pretty tough. It's not like it's going to break on you, but it feels like it's a consumer lens. I really don't see major differences between this and the 18 and the 135 in terms of build quality. That's just my honest opinion. Now, with the 70 to 200, this thing is built like a tank. When I first picked it up and started using it, I started. In, I instantly thought of military equipment. It felt like I was using some sort of military rifle or something like that. It has very, very strong uh, metal construction it has a great feel to the rings and really that's where you're going to be paying uh, that's what you're paying for with these L lenses you definitely get a lot better build quality you definitely don't have to worry about them as much if you're swinging them around a lot they're very they're not indestructible but they're close to it and if you have a body that has metal uh, metal construction like the 7d or the 5d you might want to match it up with the lens that has similar construction because if you're not doing that you're not going to get the benefit of that camera body you bought. Now for the 7200, this lens is probably uh, one of the L lenses that you should buy. If you're only going to buy one L lens, this is the one you should buy. It allows you to go from 70 to 200 without any sort of problems in that zoom range. At 70, of course, it's not that wide, so there's no barrel distortion. There's not much vignetting at all. And this is just the only L lens that I think I, I will ever purchase without having any regrets. The 24 to 105 kind of leaves me saying, hmm, maybe I should have waited for the Sigma to come out. Maybe I should have just kept the 18 to 135. But this lens, I mean, there's no regrets here. The other 18 to 135 options uh, in terms of Sigma and Tamron are really lackluster. This thing really shines, and it's expensive. It's about $2,500, but the feature set on these lenses is superb. 
I definitely think this is worth it. Now the thing is, you have to realize, I sold a lot of my consumer lenses because I transferred over to L lenses, but I still keep a lot of consumer lenses. This is the 50 1.8. The 50 1.2 is out, it's a great L lens. I really want it personally, but I gotta be honest, sometimes keeping, especially on the primes, a consumer lens is fine. This thing actually has very good quality. F1.8 is extremely wide, it's my widest lens I own, and it only cost it about $100. If you're gonna go for a consumer lens, the 51.8 is fine, the 42.8 is an awesome little street photography lens, um, and there's a lot of good consumer grade lenses, mostly primes, that are fun to use, but once you get into the zoom ranges, I, that's really where I recommend L lenses, that's really where they shine. Because usually with zoom, uh, zoom ranges, you have a lot of problems with barrel distortion, you have a lot of problems with color fringing, you have a lot of problems with the aperture changing throughout the range with the 70 to 200 and the 24 to 105 and even the 24 to 70 on the Canon side, you get really, really great performance for that zoom range. So there you go, that is my basic thoughts on L lenses so far. If you want to see a specific review or some videos on any of the lenses I talked about in this video, I probably have one on my channel, and if I don't, I'll do one in the future. Comment it below, and that's pretty much it. I am Tony. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and comment below, and I'll see you guys next time.